maybe many of you have a similar experience where I will listen to general conference or I'll listen to conference talks throughout the, the six months in between, or I'll go to church or I'll have a spiritual experience. And boy, I really feel this drive, this interest, this motivation to really be better. And I, and I think, okay, we're going to, boy, we're really going to read our scriptures every day this week as a family. And we're going to do family prayer twice. And we're going to shoot, eat together as a family. And I'm going to do my genealogy and we're going to go to the temple. And I have two sons who are, we're in a trio for ministering. My two sons are my ministering partners. And boy, we're really going to get our ministering done this week. And I feel so compelled, called, driven, inspired to do great things. And sometimes it works. And other times it becomes this perpetual frustrating cycle of really wanting to be better, wanting to do better, wanting to do new things and feeling called to do them. And the gap between what I want to do and, and then actually doing it. And maybe some of you have felt that way. I always joke around that six o'clock me, 6 a.m. me and 8 p.m. me are always really motivated. The problem is, is that 6 a.m. me is really motivated for 8 p.m. So I'll wake up at 6 a.m. and think, oh, I'm kind of tired. I'm a little, I'm a little extra tired. So I'm going to sleep just a little bit longer rather than maybe getting up and studying my scriptures or exercising or reading or doing something. And But I'm going to do it tonight. I'm going to get the kids to bed. And then at 8 p.m., I'm really going to do it. And 8 p.m. me thinks, ah, oh, it's been a tough day, rough, getting the kids to bed and stuff. And I'm kind of tired. And so I think the best thing to do would be to maybe watch a little bit of TV or something and then get to bed at a good time so that I can get right up and I'm going to boom, pop out of bed at 5.45 and 6 a.m. I'm going to really be rocking and rolling. And I go through this weird downward, downward spiral of 6 a.m. and 8 p.m. And sometimes like sacrament meeting me and Monday night me go through that same challenge where sacrament meeting me is really inspired to do new things and be better. And, and Monday night me is like, oh my gosh, hi, family home evening or whatever. Come follow me, whatever. So I want to talk today a little bit about three ways to win at new things, because I've noticed for myself, it's not that I don't want to. It's not that I don't think it's important. It's not that I don't feel inspired. It's not that I don't think that these things would be good and bring me closer to Christ and help me live a more Christ-like life or help me, you know, just be happier. I, I do think these things would help me, but, but how do I actually win at these things? And so I, I want to share three ways, three ways to win when we feel this. And, and to highlight this, I want to talk about three gaps because often there's a gap between what we want to do and what we do. And, and, and so here's the first gap. The first gap is often the motivation gap, which is kind of that gap between what I, I feel really motivated to do and what I, what I actually do. That's 6 a.m. me versus 8 p.m. me. I, I really feel motivated. I really feel compelled. I watch conference and I feel totally motivated to live so much better. But, but there's a gap. And, and we have a couple of fun scriptures that talk about this gap between, between what we feel like we should do and what we actually do. Oh, sorry. We can go to the next. I love what Nephi says here. He has this same kind of motivation gap. This is 1 Nephi 14.30. He's wrapping up talking about his vision. So Lehi has the vision. Nephi wants to have the vision. He has the vision. 1 Nephi 14, he wraps it up. I love what he says here. He says, I'm, I'm going to make an end of it. And he says, if all the things which I saw are not written, the things which I have written are true. And boy, that really stuck with me. That really popped off the page at me recently as I studied that. And I think it was those three, those three words, all the things. There's, there's memes about this. I often hear that all the things... And sometimes huh, we feel like we got to do all the things. If I don't do all the things, there's, there's something missing, wrong, bad, huh, negative. 
I got to do all the things. Well, Nephi comes right out and says, I'm not doing all the things. He saw things that for whatever reason, he didn't include in his record. He was tired. He was worn out. He had kids to take care of. He had a calling. I mean, he was the prophet. Plus, it might have been the king at the time. Well, I guess they weren't in America. He wasn't the king at the time, but he had some brothers who were causing him some problems. He needed to take care of things in the family. He was trying to go through the wilderness. So he couldn't do all the things. I bet he wanted to write down more of the things that he saw. But he says, man, if I can't write down all the things which I've seen, the things which I have written are true. Sometimes it's okay to say, I can't do everything, but I want to make sure that I've done the right things, good things. And thus it is. I, I hope that maybe tonight you might live a, a, a thus it is life. I haven't done all the things today, but the things that I've done are good. And thus it is, amen. And just boom, close your day. That's what Nephi does with this vision. I can't write everything that I've seen, but but what I have written is true. What Nephi doesn't say is, I can't write down everything, and so I'm a failure. I can't write down all the things that I've seen, and so I'm not going to write anything. I can't write down all the things that I've seen, and so I'm just going to waste my day. I don't know. What, I wonder what they did in the wilderness, the equivalent of like scrolling Instagram or watching Netflix, the like throwing a rock, kicking sand, something for his brothers. It was tying them up. That was kind of their fun thing that they would do. But he doesn't he doesn't seem to indicate this, this self-doubt. Loathing is a strong word, but we often feel that way if we haven't done everything. He says, no, I haven't done everything, but I've done enough. And thus it is, amen. So what's the first key? What do we learn from Nephi there? The next slide will tell us that the first key then to the first way to win is to keep it small. We sometimes live in a culture, I love that Mary Alice talked about this, a culture of kind of like go big or go home. Or or it's you know it's got to be big, but but that's not true. The first thing that we actually want to do is make it small. If you're thinking about scripture study, just read a verse. If you're thinking about come follow me, just spend 5 minutes. If you're thinking about more family time together, just try to spend five minutes together as a family. If you're thinking about uh, trying to do better with your ministering, just a couple of text messages a month. Just keep it small. It's okay. I can't do all things, but I can do something. And thus it is, Nephi said. Thus it is. I can't do it all but I can do something. So whatever it is you're wanting to do, whatever it is you feel called, compelled, driven, inspired, motivated to do, go small. That's my first invitation. Because as Alma 37 teaches us, never forget it is by small and simple things that great things are brought to pass. And small means in many instances, death confound the wise. So don't worry about having to do really, really big things. Go ahead and go small to be successful. Okay, the next slide, I think, is that verse, Alma 37, 6. So I already did that one. We can skip to the next one, the intention gap. The motivation gap is like, I, I sometimes I feel like it, sometimes I don't. The intention gap is the gap between what we want to do and what we actually, like, I really want to, I intend to do things. Boy, Paul in Romans 7, hit the intention gap so well. Next slide has some verses for us from Paul. Romans 7, 15. Does this, I love this verse. I love Romans 7, 15. For what I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. Man, Paul nailed it. How many times in your life have you felt that? For what I would, that do I not, but what I hate, that do I. <laughs> then he goes on to say, I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. He fills it inside. His inward man is saying, yes, live the law of God. 23, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. I don't do the things I feel 
inside driven to do. I see another law warring against the law of mind. I want to. I feel like I should. I, I feel like this would be important. This would be good. Even Paul says he felt a war going on inside him. So how do we make it more likely to win the war? The second key. Oh, way to win number two. I should say two. I messed up on my slides. That's my fault. That's okay. Sometimes you make mistakes and you just go on. Way to win number two is make it easy. Sometimes we make things hard on ourselves. But when we want to make changes, the reality is, is that our lives are primarily set up to continue to do the same things we've always done. If you're always doing the things you've always done, that's not surprising because your life is specifically designed for you to continue to do the things that you always do. You're going to keep eating the foods that you always eat because you keep buying the same foods all the time. You're going to keep wearing the same clothes that you always wear because those are the clothes that you have. You're going to keep driving to work the same way because that's why you always drive. You're going to keep doing the same thing at night because kind of that's what you always do. If your night pattern it, it includes social media and TV or games or puzzles or whatever it is, you're likely to keep doing that because you always keep doing that. So when you want to change something, make it easier. Let me give you two ideas around how to make something easier. Next slide says that to make something easier, the first thing is to do what we call habit stacking. And this is taking something that you're already doing and taking the new thing that you want to do and matching them up. So if you want to do, say, family scripture study every night, there's something you're already doing at night that you can connect to family scripture study. Maybe it's telling your kids to brush your teeth. And so, or maybe it's you brushing your teeth, or maybe it's you putting on your pajamas, or maybe it's your kids putting on their pajamas, or maybe it's eating dinner. We did this weird thing when I was a kid growing up is that we would read our scriptures. The time we were most successful, we would read our scriptures right after dinner, before we'd even clean up. Now, back then we were pretty much a, 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 an eat dinner together type family, but, but we would eat dinner and then we would grab our scriptures. That's habit stacking. Right after you eat dinner, grab your scriptures and we would study. We didn't do it later at night because by then we had spread to the winds. But there's something you're already doing that you can partner together with something new that you want to do. This helps you close that gap. This helps you win that war that Paul talked about. You already have lots of habits. Take something you want to do, tie it to something that you're already doing. The other thing is to change your environment. Our environment is specifically designed to do the things that we want to do. In fact, I'm sitting here at my desk right now, and it's fascinating how many things around me are a part of things that I kind of want to do. Like for me, I try to drink a lot of water because I've heard that that's supposed to be healthy for you. And so right there, there's my water jug. I always try to have my water right then. I try to read my scriptures every day. So there's my scriptures right there. My scriptures are not like over in my nightstand or up, you know upstairs or something. No, they're right here because I want it to be as easy as possible to get my scriptures. I try to write down three things I'm grateful for every single day. My wife got me this cute little notebook. Look how cute that is. That's me and my wife. She put this together for me for Christmas. That was fun. And it's right here. And here is my things that I'm grateful for this week. But it's right here. That, that It's so easy to, to, to grab that. If you want to read your scriptures more as a family, put your scriptures, family scriptures together somewhere easy to get to. Don't don't have them hidden in drawers or cupboards or something. It's going to be more difficult. In fact, if you want to read more and you know watch TV less, hide the batteries to the TV remote and put your scriptures out. Whatever it is you want to do, change the environment. Put it closer. Put it. Make it prominent. Make it easier to get to, and and you'll do it more. Okay. So number one was make it small. If you're thinking I, we need to do more family scripture study, that's something new we need to try. Great. Just shoot for five minutes. Shoot for we're all going to read one verse. Just get started. Build momentum rather than trying to feel like you got to do a 30 minute come follow me lesson every every time. You don't have to do that. It's okay. I promise. And if I said, I can't write it all, I can't do all the things, but what I did was true. Thus it is. Amen. Sometimes you just do scripture study. Thus it is. Amen. And number two, make it easy. Okay. Last one. Now the excitement gap. Sometimes we're not always super excited about doing the things that we know we should do. Paul talked about it. I feel inside that I should do something, but it's not always what I do. And, and, and so the excitement gap, and I love it. Mary Alice already talked about this. Thank you, 
Mary Alice, for touching on this. I'm just going to briefly touch on it then because you already hit it. There's a couple of scriptures on the next slide in Doctrine and Covenants that I really love uh, uh, that talks about this concept. Wherefore, be not weary in well-doing. I love that line. Be not weary in well-doing. I love Doctrine and Covenants section 138, uh, number 36, verse 28. If thou art merry, praise the Lord with singing, with music, with dancing, with the prayer of praise and thanksgiving. And, and this is that concept of celebrating small wins. That's number three. And on the next slide, it's going to say way to win number one. But this is actually way to win number three. That's because I messed up on my slides. That's okay. Celebrate small wins. We oftentimes, as Mary Alice already said, are hesitant to celebrate. And when we do celebrate, we think it needs to be big. We think we need to celebrate some large, gigantic thing. You know, if my family's not crossing the wilderness, it's not worthy of a celebration. <laughs> if if I'm not standing up getting shot at by Lamanites and all their arrows are missing me like Samuel the Lamanite, it's not worthy of celebration. If, you know, gosh, some major thing isn't happening, it's not worthy of celebration. And, and I personally believe that's not how God wants us to live. We celebrate small wins. One last quote here from Gordon B. Hinckley that I love. He says, he comes to us with a plea to stop seeking out the storms and enjoy more fully the sunlight, accentuate the positive, look a little deeper for the good, compliment virtue and effort. If you do a two-minute scripture study, celebrate it. If you do five minutes together as a family, celebrate it. If you read one verse, send one ministering text, attend church for 30 minutes, whatever it is, whatever small thing, celebrate it. Look for the good. Live in the sunlight. Fully enjoy the sunlight of having done something great. Three simple things. Next slide, we'll just recap them. Make it small. Make it easy by habit stacking and changing your environment and celebrate the good more consistently and you'll start to close the gap between what you want to do and what you can do or, or what you do accomplish and then at the end of the day say couldn't do everything can't do all the things but what i did was good and thus it is amen and just like nephi we just do the best we can and go on share that in the name of jesus christ amen <music>